$64,000 question. Will she turn on? <laughs> 95 days apart. She turns on. Okay. Well, we'll let her run for a minute. Do a get, Take the rest of my window covers down. Do a full assessment before I pull out of the parking lot. And up. Yay. Did you know that by replacing one serving it's per day expensive. of red meat with a serving of nuts? And we've got a Trader Joe's. The day is trending positive. Well, the question is how much of this did I actually need? And how much did I just want? Hello. Switching to a much better camera situation now that I've settled and kind of have my bearings. Okay, so I've got gas. Regular was $5 plus per gallon. Welcome to California. Um, I bought ice while I was there because I know from experience that Trader Joe's does not have ice. And I actually had um, ordered for pickup a new pair of trail shoes and running shoes for the season because I want to have my ones from last season and a new pair to rotate into this season um, for pickup at REI. And I noticed there's Trader Joe's right here. It's just down the street from the um, gas station. It all just worked out. I'll do a quick haul for you. Um, if you followed me for any length of time, this is not going to be like a very surprising group of stuff, okay? But to get some, some fun things. We'll save the fun things for last. Plus, I want to put the things that need to stay cold at the bottom. My favorite kombucha, I really like this immunity one, uh, for immunity, <laughs> as it were. Um, I got, it's a very short trip, so I got one for each day. I got, of course, I put the things that I like the post on some chicken because I got some pre made salad and I want to um, like mix it in for a little, just to be a little extra. Oh, got hummus as we do. I got carrots and snack peas to go with said hummus. I got these for hiking little like salami cheese kits and they're all nice and sealed so they don't like they're not like super smelly it's not really bears where i'm going but you still want to be you know mindful of that and then i got salad for each day i got this and i've tried these all before i think mediterranean style salad kit and the sesame crunch one of my all-time days really yummy and then i got this for today this one actually has some chicken in it it's a little pearl um, couscous salad with chicken. It's delightful. And I got some food. I got a couple of sumo citrus, which are still in season, and it's still my favorite. And I got a few apples. I think I'll leave one out. I should have gotten something for lunch, like, now. Yeah, didn't think about that. That's all right. Have my Olympic National Park bag that's gone all over the country with me. Is that all in? I think I can put the croissants in there. Um, so I got a couple of croissants. I like that they sell them in just like a pack of two so you don't have to buy, you know, six croissants. That was very nice for me. Um, and the rest of the things I'll put in the front. Uh, these crackers I used to have a lot when I lived at home and I haven't had them in a long time because I haven't lived at home for 23 years. And then these chips are like a guilty pleasure that I very rarely get, but when I'm on the road, we indulge and you guys know my favorite road trip snack is licorice it's really the only time I eat it is when I'm doing long drives I don't have any long drives this time but I was there so I was like I'll uh you know stock up all right let's go to REI the mothership always always the mothership okay shoes have been acquired there's this little bakery right here let's see if I can grab a bite for the road then we'll get to it I'm using this camera in the car. It gives such a wide angle. Wow. I don't even have the wide angle lens thing on it. Okay, shoes have been acquired. Guys, okay, so now I'm an ultra stand. Lately I've been back in the lone peaks. I gave up the cushion life. It didn't do good things for my body. Everybody's an individual though, so do what you gotta do. These are the all-weather version. So I have the Olympus hiking shoes all-weather that live in this car that are well broken in they don't really need to be like totally replaced but for the events that i have coming up this summer 
I wanted to start breaking those in. And they're also good for running. I just want them to stay in the car. Now, one of the great perks of being an REI co-op member, I don't know how much it costs now, but when I bought in my membership many years ago, it was like $20. And did I only have to do it once? And every year they give back as a dividend 10% in coupons to you that of the toll you spent last year, the previous year, they give you back 10% to use in coupons for the next year. So those shoes were free because I had just enough. I had to pay like 20 bucks, I think, but they're like 150 something dollar shoes. Um, and I had enough to pay for that. So if you ever think you're going to spend at least like $210 or yeah, then it's worth it. It pays for itself. You get a dollar back. Um, from your initial investment, if that makes sense. Anyway, just going to say that as a helpful tip from me to you. I was thinking of going to get my car washed. The Where I'm going is only two hours away. <laughs> two and a half hours, probably. Uh, oh, I haven't even told you yet. We're going to Joshua Tree. I'm so excited. This has been on my bucket list forever. And I'm spending three nights in Joshua Tree, which feels like such a treat. I'm camping tonight, and then I'm airbnb -ing the weekend I would have camped longer but it's apparently high season there because it's like so cool and mild for here it's like 65 70 degrees every day and uh so it's very very popular and it's hard to get um camping site there is BLM land and stuff but I found a really cool Airbnb and all of them are like a two night minimum so I was like you know what we'll just do it but we're gonna hike and do all that uh but I was thinking I might just I like to get my car washed especially when it's been sitting for so long and I might I want to go put some air in the tires. Um, so I might go do that, but I will show you what I got for lunch. So I'm going to eat it probably in transit. I got a, a turkey wrap, essentially. It came with chips. I also bought a cookie. They eat along the way and they save for later. And I got an iced oat milk chai for the road because that sounded really good. And that is everything. Okay, friends. I'm still so delighted that the car turned on. I'm like, yay. Okay, let's go. I think we'll see if this car wash place. It's only got five minutes away. Looks legit. I'll get a wash and if not, we'll just go. I also kind of have to figure out my water situation because I don't think I have, I don't think I have a lot. And I didn't think about that when I was at Trader Joe's. We'll talk about all these things at the campsite. Let's mosey on. With a primo wash, it's getting real shiny. Well, this is the nicest car wash who's ever had. And they're playing like smooth jazz. It's a good day. Yeah, she has never looked this shiny. Wow. Like right off the lot shiny. This place and Laguna Hills. Somebody might need a wig and I can come and say I have that thing. Do you think that that's a value underneath it that you like to be useful and say I have something for this moment? Because I get that also having an attic full of ideas oh, about how you're getting there. Just to oh, how cool is this? Oh, it is so neat. Don't don't gather any vegetation. It's prohibited. Cool. Well, you can see why it's a popular place for rock climbers. My goodness. Look at these boulders. Wow. This is so cool. Ugh, I'm already in love. This is us. 58. I'm gonna try to maneuver in. And we're back. It's a little crooked. It's not a little spot. I wonder actually if I should put her down there. Oh, I'm still figuring it out, but I made it. That's what feels important. Hmm. Let me think about this. All right, it isn't exactly level, but it's not gonna get there. I just spent maybe like 10 minutes kind of just like inching the car around. There's nobody here yet. Like I can see other campsites set up, but the people are out and about doing other things. So it's a good time for me to like have the car on and be annoying and move it around. But I think I've got it set up now. I'm going to put my window shades in for privacy. Well, anyway, I'm going to spend some time now 
well I don't feel awkward talking to myself on camera because <laughs> nobody else is around just setting up and getting organized and then there's a little like half a mile walk probably half a mile from here that I want to do just to kind of shake out my legs before the sun goes down um, I'm real tired so I think it's gonna be a pretty early night um, especially because I'm like you know I'm really out of practice for this, but I, I'm excited and I love this spot. I mean, come on. I'll show you around. Site 58. I'll just give you a quick overview. It's meant for tent camping. I'm going to sleep in my car because it's level enough for me. We got a nice big fire pit, some boulders. You could pitch a tent there. You could pitch a tent there. I think you could fit two cars in this space if they're regular cars. Um, and that's about it, but you're real close to your neighbor, so neighbor there, neighbor there. Just one of the reasons I love sleeping in my car, because it gives me a little bit more privacy. But I mean, you just, it's so beautiful out. And it's, I don't know, maybe like 60 degrees. It's perfect. Here's the bathroom situation. It's gonna be your standard pit toilet. Oh, but there is a, um, oh, it's stinky. <laughs> It is a uh, dumpster, so that's good because I got some trash for my lunch. Ooh, stinky, but a good view. Oh my goodness. So pretty. It's a full campsite, but it's not like loud at all. Wow, you guys, I can't even. Ooh, it's raining down there. Ugh, it's beautiful. Oh, and that's what we want the Indian Cove Nature Trail. This way. So, I don't know if you heard me in the car earlier. Cause I, was, I don't know, I was just so excited that blue turned on. But it's been 95 days since our last adventure together. I had her tucked away in storage in Anaheim for all that time. And she was fine. And now I'm here. And it feels very surreal. And I haven't quite... Um, like, it hasn't quite settled in yet, but I am grateful. I'm excited to share all this with you. So, take a little walk. Do what we do. Oh, could it be more pure, perfect out? I'm already out of breath. <laughs> Gotta get in shape. Look, people are climbing. Whoa. I wonder if that weather is going to come this way. Well, hopefully not in the next like 30 minutes. <laughs> As I would like to do this with a walk, it's just a very short little loop. I think it takes longer to get there than the trail is long. It's perfect though. It's so pretty out. Ooh, we may see some sheep on this trip. A corridor of biodiversity. How cool is this? I love the desert. It's so fun to go to the desert. Oh, look at this. Ooh, it's a trail with placards. You know we like that. I mean... It's just... You know, it's not pretty at all or anything. are starting to fill in. So I pulled out my Jackery, which somehow still has 65% battery on it, so that feels, you know, promising. And I'm going to charge my phone and my camera um, before I go to bed tonight. Where's my phone? Here it is. And I'm not, I like, have a little bit of like a nervous stomach. I think this is just you know, I've been really excited and also really tired and um, like a little indigestion-y. So 
I'm gonna make myself a cup of mint tea. Breaking out the stand old, standby favorite, my electric kettle. Uh, I'm glad that I went back into Trader Joe's and I bought two jugs of water because my water situation after over three months parked needs to be completely cleaned out and replaced. Which is not the end of the world, but I have enough water to get me through until I'm in a place where I can do that tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I'm hoping a little mint tea will help settle my stomach. And I'm just also going to, I'm packing up for my hiking, my day bag tomorrow. I might, I'm definitely going to do one seven mile trail and I might end up doing two. We'll see how I feel. Um, and all of that. Because I have like basically all day until I can check into my Airbnb and how often do I get out here? So like never. So I usually just bring like a fruit leather, a package of peanut butter and an apple. And then I'm also going to bring those little cheese and crackers I showed you. So I'm going to open those up and put them in a little baggie. And I'm going to bring this to the pack. I'm going to fill up my water reservoir. Um, just so it's all ready in the morning so I can just get up and go. That's my favorite thing to do. Um, I think my lanterns are okay. I just got to remember to leave them in my windshield when I hike tomorrow because they do charge by solar, although I can also hook them up to the jackery if I wanted. But, uh, yeah. Somebody's doing something somewhere. Anyway, that's basically the gist of what's happening right now, as in not a whole lot, but you know what? It's all good. It's all good. Oh, I've got my car mug. Beautiful, beautiful mug. All right, well, I'm going to stop filming and start doing all these little things before I lose light, and also the, it looks like the rain is coming in, so I want to get all of this done, get myself packed in, um... For the night. I'm kind of excited if it rains a little, to be honest. I mean, it's kind of a pain in the butt, but also it's really nice. It's kind of like a soothing thing. Ooh, hello. Well, it's 5.30. You can't see that, it's too bright. It's 5.34, okay? Feels like 9.30 at night to me. It's not really, it's only 7.30 at home. I don't do that, I always tried my best to think on local time immediately but I did not sleep a whole lot last night I had a very early flight and um, I was too like nervous excited to go to sleep at a decent hour so I think I'm gonna conk out pretty early anyway I've already tucked in I usually like to keep the hatch open and keep myself kind of like in the flow of things until it's mostly dark or like mostly dusk it's just now but it started raining a little bit just a little bit but enough, you know? Enough for me to be like, well, what am I doing outside anyway? Um, so I, I have my phone charged 80%, which is fine. I also grabbed one of my external heart, uh, batteries. Um, I put in my hiking bag and one I will top off my phone tonight just to make sure. I don't have service here, although it like intermittently comes and goes, so I feel like that drains the battery. I might just put it on airplane mode, to be honest, because what's the point? Um, and that will save my battery. And then I have a little bit of a drive to the trailhead in the morning. No matter which trail, I can't decide between two. Um, I have them downloaded, so I'm going to look at them again and kind of decide, but... Um, it's still about like a 30 minute drive, just the way that this park is set up. This campground, how do you, oh, you can hear the rain. It's called Indian Cove Campground. I looked at the reviews of all the campgrounds here as I normally do when I'm searching for a campground. <gasps> I came in at the right moment. Anyway, it's, um, it got really good reviews for being not only beautiful, but a little less like close together in terms of spacing and a little less crowded feeling, a little quieter. Those all tick my boxes. And I will say that it is all of those things, at least at 5.30 on a Thursday in early March. $25 for one night, which is kind of middle of the road for a national park, if you like. Might be like lowish middle of the road. I don't know, it depends. I've been to, at uh, Grand Teton National Park, it was, $50 a night 
for like a campsite like this, um, which wasn't even quite as nice, but I, I was glad I camped there. Anyway, like I said, I have this tummy, tummy ache. I don't really feel like eating. I might in a little bit. I just, I think I'm going to maybe just lie down and read my book. Maybe do a little journaling. Um, I've got my little lantern set up and, um, I don't know. I went, uh, luckily I had the foresight to go use the bathroom right before it started raining too, so hopefully I'll be good for a little while. Maybe this will blow over by the time I have to, I'll probably have to go one more time before the pack it in for the night, but can you hear the rain? I'm guessing that you can. Oh, and the wind. I'm so glad I have my car. I, I would not want to be out in a tent right now. I feel like, I don't know. Sometimes it's fun, and sometimes I'm just happy to have my car. <laughs> anyway. Um, I feel like a little lackluster and I'm sorry but <laughs> that I'm not like sparkly, even though I am very happy to be here. I'm extraordinarily tired. So I'm going to keep aware of that and, um, just kind of cozy up and listen to my body and I don't know, feel snug as a bug in here. So that's all that's happening. Okay. Um, this is the book that I started reading on the plane. I'm only like one chapter in because I worked most of the time on the plane. Really like it so far. Only, like I said, one chapter in. And, uh, wow, the car is like shaking from the wind. Okay, well this is fun. Alrighty, I, I don't know if I'll check in again tonight because it's going to be more of this, but, um, I'll see you at some point. Good vlogging, Chet. I'm a little rusty. It's 7.30, too early to go to bed. Asking for a friend. <laughs> that friend. That one. Actually, I run Disney, I go to bed at 7.30. But I wake up at 2.30 morning. I don't want to wake up at 2.30 in the morning. <sighs> it's so peaceful. It's kind of, like, half overcast. But the other half, the stars. That was one of the things I was most excited to see here, is the stars. Whoa. Sorry, I'm still getting used to this camera. I can't tell you how clear they are. The last time I saw stars that clear, I think it was backpacking in Yosemite when I was in 8th grade. Um, like this crystal clear, and it's like mostly overcast. So, I'm excited to see if I get good, any, like, stargazing from the place that I rented for the next two nights, but I knew in the park that I would have uh, a good chance of seeing some stars, and so I spent some time outside, and I did end up eating some hummus and crackers and, um, carrots, and I feel much better. Um, I know I'm snug as a bug as a rug. So that's it for day one in Joshua Tree. And I'm excited to go hiking and explore more tomorrow. I guess I should probably stay up a little bit longer. <laughs> okay, good night, friends. Bye. I still, why do I try? I don't even know. <laughs> good night. Good morning. I slept for nine. Nine. Nine hours. It was glorious. And I just, what I do at campsites typically, when I know I'm going hiking, so I'm waking up, you know, and all that early, I just go. I just get up and go uh, and right to the trailhead. And I've heard many accounts that this entrance, this is the west entrance of the park. It's like super backed up. There wasn't even a ranger there. <laughs> like it's so, it's not even that early. It's 630. But <clears throat> I guess that's early here. It's also Friday. I feel like it'll be significantly more crowded tomorrow. So I decided to do like the hike that I wanted to do at this entrance today. So there's not really like a parking lot here. Um, it's just kind of like side of the road parking. I'm not one here though, but um, I've heard through the, if you look at your 
All trails is what I use for tracking hikes and download your hikes because service is very spotty here. Um, it, um, like a lot of, I look at reviews a lot, especially more recent reviews, and they will tell you about how like crowded the parking lots and stuff gets. And apparently this does fill up. So I've already packed my bag, which is pretty much ready to go. I'm just going to change my shoes and put my hair up, put my hat on. You know we need a good hat. I'm going to put, um, oh, I might grab a croissant to bring with me. Um, and put my window covers in. And I think I should be, should be all set. So, by the way, that campsite was perfect. 10 out of 10 recommend. It was quiet and peaceful. And even though I was on a slight grade, and so I'm like a little like <laughs> sorts this morning. I slept like a rock. Can't decide if I want to try to break in my new shoes or not. These are my shoes from last season. <laughs> I love them, but they're like, they still have a little, they still have a little bit left in them. <laughs> They've seen better days. <sighs> I think I might because it's my first hike and it's a, my one of the longer ones. It's like seven plus miles. I think I will wear these because I just, they're already broken in. So I don't have to worry about that. Um, and I'll save breaking in those other trail shoes for like a very low key. This is pretty easy. I don't think there's a lot of gain. I think it's only like 800 feet or something total. So I'm not worried about it being like challenging in that way, but I haven't been on a trail in many, many, many months. So I just want to, you know, not do anything completely stupid. We try. All right, let's get going before the sun gets in here. Doesn't everybody? Everybody starts out their morning hikes with a croissant, right? <laughs> Maze Loop Trail. This is a very cute little sign. Let's go look at it. Okay, know your limits. Could take hours or days. Okay, well, we try not to get lost. This says only 400 feet, but the map says 800 of elevation game. The only thing is there is no toilet situation, which I didn't think about, but you know, we'll figure it out. I'm the only one here, so. This is the scene heading out. It's like, I don't know, 640? Those are the Joshua trees, by the way. Hence the name of the park. We're gonna see a lot of them. All right, here we go. You are here. We are going. Look at all those Joshua trees. We've got a field of them. Trail is nice and sandy, as one might assume in the uh, desert. Look at this. Whoa. There we go. <laughs> I'm still working on figuring out this camera. It's all right. Around this corner. And you get a view of some mountains over yonder. Oh, some snow-capped mountains. I wonder if that's Big Bear. Thoughts to myself, 15 minutes in. I should have worn gloves because it's really not that cold. It's like 50 degrees, but the wind is biting. Also, I need to start remembering to wear my fanny pack to put my phone and my camera in just for easy access. Not that I need any more space. I have plenty in my pack, but for access. So I have to remember that. And three, I left my Garmin in reach at home again. Don't like hiking without it, but I don't have it. So note to self editing Jen, put that thing in your backpack. Bring it so it comes back with you next time you come out on a road trip, okay? Y'all remind me, I need that thing. Peace of mind.
strange. It's very quiet and peaceful and serene around here. And then every so often I hear a deep resounding boom, like an explosion somewhere in the distance. And it's a little disconcerting because there's like, you can kind of hear very distantly, some air, like an airplane or something. But other than that, there's no ambient noise other than nature. I know there's a marine base near here. Maybe they're practicing something. I don't know. Anyway, it's beautiful. I did take a layer off and put my hat on um, because of where the sun is. It's better um, for my eyes. I'm really enjoying this. It's beautiful. the Meizu Trail. Oh, you still go into the wilderness. Well, I'm doing the trail that also does like the, I think they call it the window loop. Look how crooked my sunglasses are. Um, and you go from the National Park into the wilderness, which is other federal land. It's just not National Park land. So we've officially crossed into the wilderness. And if we listen, hard to hear here but down in the more less windy parts you could really hear the booming I don't know if the camera's gonna pick that up it's like picked up in frequency the boom so I'm gonna go to the um, visitor center probably after this and ask plus I want sticker stickers let's be honest we need more than one sticker Gorgeous, gorgeous morning. So my all trail says like 7.58 miles, 879 feet elevation gain, and three hours total. I don't think I don't think you can see that, but my watch says it was 1,100 feet, um, but the same distance, basically in the same time. Hi, it's really loud here, so I put my mic on. Hopefully, so you can hear me better, because the cars now it's getting busy. And cars are going back and forth. I decided to um, make a cup of tea, as one does, out of the back of their car after a seven and a half mile hike in the desert. The heart wants what it wants, you guys. The heart wants what it wants. Where did I put that tea bag? Here it is. Anyway, that was delightful. Very, I would say it's rated moderate. I would call it very easy end of moderate. There's a little bit of elevation gain and like, um, a little bit of mixed terrain towards the beginning if you go clockwise like me which I did based on reviews that's usually how I pick the direction of my trails lately is what people say in the reviews um, and I enjoyed it I didn't see a soul until the last mile and a half so like six some odd miles in then I finally saw two sets of two people within that last like mile and change there's a bunch of um, backpackers who just rolled up the trailer and it looks like they're gonna spend the night. If you go clockwise, it's just like the first couple, maybe three miles that are a little bit more uphill and a little bit more varied terrain. Um, but then it really levels out and it's very easy. It's sandy, yes, but it's not like the kind of sand that's hard to walk in. I don't know, it was beautiful. I didn't see very much wildlife. I saw a bunch of little gray birds. I, they were so fast, I didn't really get a good look at them. Very small. And I saw one little critter who looked like a chipmunk, but I'm sure it's not actually a chipmunk, but some like desert chipmunk cousin. 
he skittered across the trail. Didn't see any other wildlife, um, which is not unusual because most of the wildlife here is very reclusive. It's very rare to see the sheep, the bighorn sheep. Um, they usually go up a little higher, I think, and the coyotes are more night critters, as is most of the desert critters because it's the desert. But it's beautiful. It went from, I think it was like, maybe like 48 degrees when I started, and now it's 57, 58. Just beautiful morning. Just beautiful. Um, and yeah, I, can, I highly recommend that trail. It's really fun. I can see how it might get harder to get parking as the day wears on, and especially if you're here on the weekend. But I'm going to have this cup of tea. I think I'm going to eat my cheese and crackers that I bought yesterday. <laughs> was, um, that sounds good. And I don't, it's not even 10, it's 9.53. So I have, oh, I have service here. Well, I might actually, it's early enough that I might be able to get on another trail. There's the one trail I really wanted to do maybe tomorrow morning. It's kind of more south from here, the Lost Horse Loop. I know that's very popular. Maybe I'll just drive down there and check out the trailhead parking lot. It's a six and a half mile hike. I mean, today's the day to do all the hiking because tomorrow I have plans in town and also I just want to like chill a bit at the house that I'm paying for tomorrow. So maybe I will do that. There's also a, a, a trail at Earmark that's only two and a half miles. But it would be nice even if I just drive down into the park a little bit. I think that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna brew this tea, I'm gonna have my little snack and we're gonna go for a little drive and see where the wind blows us. Well, I'm here. There's parking, even though there's definitely cars in the lot. Um, and there's a, I don't think you can see it, but right over there's a little, probably like a pit, pit toilet. Let's go for another hike. Lost horse loop. I mean, there's parking and a toilet. Can I have to go? Alright, here we go. There's a group of young men behind me. I might let them pass through just so I can hike in peace, but here's the scene. See those kids there? I don't know, they're probably like 18, 20, 22, I don't know, something like that. Not one of them is carrying water. Not one. It's a six and a half mile loop in the desert. And I know they walked from the main road, which is at least another mile and change each way. No, nobody brought water? Y'all, you should be carrying the 10, I forget what they call it, the top 10 necessities if you're taking a length, a lengthy height, a, le a lengthy hike you know, which I have in my pack. It's not heavy, but you should at least have water. <sighs> sure, it's like, it's cooler here. It's a little higher, it's like 53 or something. It's not hot, but the sun, and you're in the desert, it's dry. So, just for me to you, please, even if you're going out for a three mile hike, take some water with you. You know, uh, I will put a list in the description and maybe a link to wherever the official list is of the 10 things you should bring with you on day hikes, okay? And I would say, for me, it's like five miles and up, I bring those things. If I know I'm within five miles of my car and I'm not planning a longer route, and I have service, I might not bring all 10 of those things. But, you know, oh, oh you guys, I forgot we were at elevation here. So right here it's 4,700 feet elevation. I'm not used to this, it's been a long time. So I'm huffing and puffing, but it's all good. Two hikes one day, what? I'm so excited. Also, I didn't mean to sound like I was chiding those young men. I'm just trying to spread the word and to my own humility. <laughs> Remember just hours ago when I was like, remind me to bring my little fanny pack so I don't have to carry my phone and my camera in my hands? Did I remember my own advice? No. So, you know, 
still human, but please bring water, please, please. If you bring nothing else, bring water and a hat. of things but there's no indication what it is look at that view gorgeous oh it's so nice out <music> This is 837 feet of elevation game. I watched this something a little bit different. And uh, two hours and 24 minutes. And this is the sign at the beginning. I didn't film it at the start because those kids were hanging around. But it's a very interesting story about um, this guy, this Johnny Lang, who bought this gold mine and just lived here by himself. And the reason it's called Lost Horse Mines because he actually knew about the property because he lost his horse here and he came looking for it. It's just fascinating. I found a nice spot uh, right by the east entrance to have a little lunch. It's almost two, but you know, we're going to have a little lunch. Oh, it's so bright out there. You can't see. Um, this was the salad I was going to eat yesterday. I'm going to eat it now. And sumo citrus probably. And yeah, I'm just hanging out. It's a nice day of hiking. I don't know what's happening with my knee. Like why all of a sudden it's like, I'm gonna be angry. Okay. I don't know. If it's not one thing, it's another. Also, the joys of getting older and you know, you just gotta take good care of yourself. So I'm trying. Knee did great on that. So that trail, that Lost Horse Mine Loop um, was somewhat steep for like the first half of it up and down the down is what really aggravated my knee and then it was pretty flat for especially like the last third and that went fine Ooh, this looks lovely anyway and it was great but my knee was like no no this might be all the hiking you're doing this trip so i'm just going to try to so basically i did the two hikes i want to do over two days just in this <laughs> one day this morning so you know just have to try to be smart about it and also it'd be nice to have kind of a chill day tomorrow so let, we'll see how the knee feels tomorrow I did like I said the two bigger hikes ish that I wanted to do and I'm very very pleased with that so oh something bit me oh something sure did bite me Right on my ankle. What kind of bite is that? I don't know. Anyway, I'm happy and I have to wait for my check in time for my Airbnb. And this is a nice, quiet parking lot. And I'm just going to chill and have some lunch. And then we'll go check in to the Airbnb of goodness. So that's what's what. I didn't film a lot of that last hike, by the way, because my knee was bothering me. And I also filmed so much of the first hike. I was like, I think probably, you know, shared enough of the Joshua Tree wilderness in, in this way. Mmm. This is nice. Or 
Cheers. Here you drive down a very country-esque kind of road. And, but then, here it is. Look how cute it is. I already got blue tucked into the parking place. It's so cute. I cannot wait to go in. It's so quiet. It's real nice and quiet. And, look, pretty private in the back. There's a fire pit, and that's a wood-burning hot tub. I, I don't know if I'm going to use it or not, but um, I'm dying to go inside, so let's go inside. Got the door open, so that feels like a win. Oh my gosh! How beautiful! Oh my gosh! I'm close. I'm like properly close the door. This is gorgeous! So um, it goes by Arrow Dunes. May good things come. Oh, that's so sweet. I love this. Look at the exposed beam ceilings. Oh, there's a projector. Well, that's neat. Look at these chairs. Apparently the fireplace is not for using. It's just for looking at. But it is sweet. Look at I love this. This is amazing. And all the windows. All the light in here. Wow, it's beautiful. When you see the sweet little kitchen, oh my gosh. Look at this. So sweet. I love it. Perfect little spot. <clears throat> this refrigerator is so cute. Oh, there is a freezer. I like, I wonder if there's a freezer. Yes, there is. Got all the things you need. Oh, that's my kettle that I have at home. Tea, coffee, plates and cups and all that jazz. Oh, love it. It's so cute. I love this sink. Look at this. Wow. What a beautiful sink. You got a little oven, stove situation. Oh, and they, they have an air conditioner. You know, I don't think you need it. It's nice and cool right now. I think it's two bedrooms. Honestly, I booked this too late to find any one bedroom spots available. The one I found was more expensive than this. And this is two bedrooms. So here's one bedroom. I just love the design. The floors are really nice too. Wow. So neat. Oh, I love this so much. Look at the closet. Come on. That's cool. All right, let's see. Hold on, let me straighten out a little here. All right, this must be the mas master. Oh, yeah. This I remember this from the pictures. Well, obviously, I'm going to sleep in this room because it's the coolest. Wow. And it has a door out to the... Um, What's it? What is that? That looks like something that you cook things on. Interesting. Amazing. Oh, I'm going to do yoga in here. I'm going to do yoga in here tonight. <laughs> oh, there's records. Oh, I love this. So neat. Such a neat spot. Wow. Cool. Okay. Can you tell I like it? Is this a closet? Oh, more of a, like a regular closet, yes. Cool. Imagine waking up in this view and out the view out your back is of nobody but your own stuff. I love it. Let's go look at the bathroom because this was one of the reasons I booked this spot. You guys know I love my tubs. Apparently, it's very hard to find a house kind of last minute on Airbnb in Joshua Tree with a tub. Not an outdoor tub, an indoor tub. And I found one. And I was like, that tub has my name all over it. It's also a shower. Fair not. And it also looks out into there. I will be using this this evening and tomorrow. For sure. Oh, I love it so much. Okay. I'm excited about this, you guys. I love this spot. So neat. Well, I just walked outside to film, and then <clears throat> this truck came barreling down the hall. 
the um, driveway and I like ran to the house. I was like, I don't know what that is. And they're filling up this cowboy pool now. And then they just went away. So it's all very confusing. Anyway, I was going to show you the outside. I'm assuming they're coming back. This looks like it's going to take a very long time to fill. <sighs> okay, let me show you the outside. So beautiful, beautiful house. We already kind of looked at the front facing side of it but it's got this beautiful rock and cactus garden that wraps around and you saw where my car is in the carport and then there's this sweet little outdoor seating area this really nice big old tree the fire pit as i mentioned before and the little rock lawn you know don't get a lot of grass in the desert um and then the cowboy pool i thought they said was only open in april through October, but they're filling it now, so I don't know what that means. Um, it looks very dirty, so I don't know how they're gonna <laughs> clean that up. And then this is the fire burning um, hot tub. Oh, fascinating. So, where does this where do you put the oh, you burn the fire in there. Fascinating. I would imagine that takes a very long time to heat up. I'm most excited about the indoor bath, to be honest, but if you want to put in the time and effort to do this, especially if it's like a romantic, you know, thing, I could see how that would be fun. Look at another amazing tree. And this is the view from the, from the tub. Well, that's pretty sweet. All right, I went ahead and messaged the Airbnb host about the people that came, and she was like, oh, yeah, that's surprising there, opening the pool a month early. But she talked to them and said it was all legit, <clears throat> so I feel better about that. The pool is still running. <laughs> they're, apparently, they're coming back. Anyway, I'm running this tub because I feel like it's going to take a while. Uh, but it's so beautiful. I'm so excited about it. I brought my own bath bombs from home. I have bath bombs will travel. They're my favorite at the moment. Look at these towels, too. These are like luxurious. So I think I'm gonna, I'm just gonna get right in the bath because I feel really gross after camping and hiking so much today. I'm just gonna take a nice long bath and take it real easy today. For, well, today, it's tonight. It's almost five. It feels like tonight. Hello. I just had, well, not just, I've been out of the bath for a while. I had the most luxurious bath. It was so lovely i soaked a long time i love that tub and i got to watch the sunset in the tub and i will be repeating that experience tomorrow so my knee feels okay now but i, th I did 14 miles all together today and i just feel like i might have done all i really want or need to do for this trip i have a couple of other hikes earmarked that are three miles or less or a less um, round trip. So they're just small little hikes. I think what I'm gonna do, if to be honest, is just let myself relax tomorrow. I'm nervous about my knee and I just wanna make sure it doesn't turn into something. As we all know how that goes. Um, and I think I might. it might be nice to like not wake up at the crack of dawn or even if I do to just like have a leisurely morning get in a solid, like really just enjoy this house that I'm paying for, which was my plan for tomorrow anyway, but I do have an experience set up in uh, through an Airbnb experience in Joshua Tree, which is about a 30 minute drive from here um, in the morning at 10 a.m. So I'd have to like really get to a hike pretty early to do it and then make sure that I get to the experience on time. It's a, a meditation, it's a guided meditation and like sound bath. Um, and they're kind of like, I don't really know a lot about this. I'm hoping that the hosts of this will explain a little bit more, but apparently there's something called a vortex. It's some sort of like energy thing around here. I know it's like a desert kind of thing too. I don't know really much at all about this, but um, the reviews from this are from people who are even like skeptics of that are like pretty, we're pretty convincing. So I was like, you know what, we're gonna do that. And there's supposed to be a really nice farmer's market in Joshua Tree on Saturdays and I'm just like you know what let's just like have a nice morning go explore Joshua Tree go to the farmers market do this 
found meditation. Th- I've never meditated for a full hour, so I think that will be interesting as well. And just like take it easy. And maybe I drove through basically like ha- a lot of the park today, and I hiked 14 miles in it, and I feel like I saw different um, vegetation and different you know, kind of aspects of the desert. Apparently there's like two deserts that come together. I do want to go to the visitor center tomorrow to get some stickers because I went to the one in 29 Palms today and I did not like the stickers I had. So we're going to go to the one in Joshua Tree and see if they have better stickers. I think that's my plan. The hot, the, the like cowboy pool is still filling. So I'm going to have to go turn that off in a, in a little bit. Um, I don't know if they decided to fill it today and they asked if I could turn it off because it's taking a really long time why they waited till four o'clock to come start filling it. I don't know. But anyway, um, so I've just been like chilling, kind of looking at the map, figuring out my plan for tomorrow. And I just want to just enjoy. So I did enjoy today, but my knee didn't enjoy today. And that makes me nervous. Like I said, it doesn't hurt now, but it makes me nervous that it hurt quite so much on the last hike. So just going to try to mind that. Anyway, I'm going to go turn this off and sit outside for a little bit because the stars are incredible. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to stretch a little and go to bed. And I will see you tomorrow. Good night. I'm not sure the camera is doing it justice, but it's really pretty out. It's a beautiful morning. The pool is full. (laughs) Finally, you want to see it? There it is. I don't think it's heated, so I'm not getting it. It's like 40 degrees out right now, (laughs) but it's full. So there it is. It's so pretty this morning. Wow. There's that sun coming up. Good morning. Good morning. I slept like a rock. That bed is so comfy. Uh, So here's what I'm deciding now that I've had a minute for my body to and my mind and the rest of me to kind of come come together the knee says no more hiking and my heart feels satisfied with what I did yesterday and what I saw of Joshua Tree it's not like this is definitively the last time I'll ever come here who knows Uh, but I feel like I saw like I said yesterday a good amount And I feel happy with that. And I know I need, it's important for me to listen to my body, which I'm not always the best at when it comes to injuries. And I'm really hoping that this is just a little blip. Hope for me, friends. Hope for me. So my plan now is to do some yoga in this gorgeous spot. Let me show you. I'm in the bedroom. Oh my gosh, you guys, that bed was so comfortable. Here, here's my setup. Look at that. With this view out the window, it's a little blown out because the sun's coming up right behind that tree, but perfect. I did a little stretchy yoga last night here too, but it was dark. So it's nice to have that. I'm gonna do all that jazz. And then I'm gonna get myself ready and go drive over to Joshua Tree. There's a coffee shop I'd like to try there. And the farmer's market starts at eight and my sound, slash guided meditation is at 10. So I figure, perfect. And then I'm probably gonna come back for the afternoon and just relax. I wanna read my book. I wanna take a really nice long bath. That bath is so nice. And just enjoy this place. Um, So yes, the last day and a half were very outdoorsy and it's not like I'm not getting outside today, but I just, you know, You got to do what your heart desires when you have the opportunity and not things that you maybe want to do less just to like check a box. I keep saying this in videos because I'm reminding myself too. Uh, But yeah, to yoga and to Joshua Tree. There it is. Town's like right on the highway strip and they're already setting up for some outdoor markets. I need to figure out where the... uh, farmer's market is, but let's get some coffee. This is a 
most crowded small town coffee shop I've ever been to in my life. That's California for you, I guess. Anyway, things are getting set up. I'm gonna look around. There's no food in there, so I'm gonna try to find something to eat. Just for context, it took like almost half an hour to get from the back of the line to coffee in my hand. But it's really good coffee. It's the only coffee shop like in town, I think. I don't know, I'm sure you can get coffee other places, but I don't mind, I'm not in a rush, and it's kind of the vibe of today. The um, farmers, this is like an art market, apparently they have every first Saturday of the month, I think? First and third, I can't remember what it said. But there's a, um, the farmer's market's on the other side, so I'm gonna go over there, I need to eat something. <laughs> Look at the name of this store. That's so funny. I think I just got talking to a local for a while and now I think I'm close to the... Oh, I know they have food in there if there's nothing at the farmer's market. Alright, here we go. Let's have a look around. Oh, I got here just in the nick of time. They're about to sell out of the pastries. Ooh, yum. It is so fun. I bought some honey from these nice people over here. Beautiful strawberries. Wow. This is reminding me that I should go to the farmer's market at home when they open for the season. I don't know why I never go. There's so many in our area. I bought a lot of stuff. I'll show you guys later. It's been a fun morning. Okay, that was fun. I'm now parked outside the house where I'm doing the meditation thing. I'm obviously not going to bring the camera into that, but I will report back. I'm going to show you though. What I got. I bought this beautiful hummus from a Greek stand, artichoke parmesan hummus. I'm gonna stick that in the cooler. Um, I got the rugula from this really sweet um, Jewish couple who makes them fresh every Saturday morning, which is amazing. And I got this desert wildflower flower honey. Oh, yum. And lastly, from the bakery place. Oh, not lastly, you know I got stickers too. But from the bakery place, I got this beautiful selection of pastries, a cookie for later, the cutest little donut. These are all like fresh homemade and a um, chocolate croissant. I'm actually pretty full from that coffee. And I had a taste of the rubo at the place, so I'm gonna eat these things later because it's just about time to go. But um, really fun. And then lastly, I bought a few stickers at a little shop. Um, oh, where did my, I bought a sticker at the coffee shop, as I want to do, and then there was a little shop next to the coffee shop, a little gift store, and I bought these two stickers, which are really sweet, and that, my friends, is all she wrote, so now I'm going to just, maybe I will put up my window shades to keep the car cool for these things, but I'm going to go in, I'm so excited, I'm a little nervous. I don't know what I've signed myself up for, but we'll go with an open mind and an open heart, as always, and see what there is to see. Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, you guys, that was incredible. So it was only a 10 minute guided meditation to start, not an hour. I don't know, for some reason I thought the whole thing was a guided meditation, but just the first hour, and then I mean the first 10 minutes and then the rest was a sound bath and it wasn't just the the bowls it was also he had like a rainmaker and and different um, bells and uh, it was so amazing and just I had the best time and actually um purchased some um, traditional cacao from him that supports a place in a, a community in Guatemala that they you know, send love and support and, and funds too. So, really beautiful day. Um, gosh, what a gorgeous morning. I do want to stop by the visitor center. Um, you know, I did find some stickers. <laughs> I'm just going to go look at the Joshua Tree um, National Park Visitor Center here before I head back to the house. But man, what a, that was exceptional. I will link the. Um, <clears throat> the listing for the Airbnb experience below. This is like a person's home, so I didn't want to like, I filmed a little bit because he said it was okay afterwards with the instruments and things to show you, but just the best. All right, 
I'm right with the day. I feel like completely like replenished. Not sure I've shown you just how like cool it is, all of the, um, the landscape around here. When you're driving around, it's so flat and the buildings are so low that you can just, you can see the park really well and all the, oh, it's just so cool. Wow, it's crowded in there. I can tell the parks are gonna be super crowded today. So they didn't have any like cute, super cute mini stickers. Um, I already bought a big sticker like I showed you. I found this postcard. And then for my water bottle, which I've been putting like smaller stickers on, I can either use this travel stamp sticker or I was thinking one of these. Um, oh, but look at this nice spot up here. I wonder, I wonder if I could fit this guy. Oh, no, it doesn't fit. Oh, I gotta find a smaller sticker, I guess. Um, put that one back. By the way, any stickers I don't use here will be used for memory keeping purposes. I feel like I bought one of these travel stamp stickers for um, when I went to Redwood. Will this fit here? It will, so we're gonna put it here. I remember these stickers don't seem sticky and then they do somehow stay. There, added that one. Nice, excellent, great success. All right, we're gonna head back to the house and enjoy the afternoon there. I think I'm gonna sit outside with my book. I'm gonna eat something finally. It's gonna, be, it's gonna continue to be a good day. It already is a good day. I am happy. I made this beautiful little smorgasbord. It's not little. This beautiful, ample smorgasbord of delights for breakfast, lunch. It's it's like noon now, so it works. I'm gonna read. I've got my kombucha. I just got to FaceTime with my son. I'm gonna text my daughter. And this is the setting. It's just. Ah, it's beautiful. This hummus, this artichoke lemon hummus, homemade. It might be the best hummus I've ever had in my entire life. Mm. 10 out of 10. Hello. It is now going on 7. I've had the most delightfully relaxing day. I filmed some awkward solo vlogging clips. <laughs> of me reading. I read a whole bunch, loving this novel. Um, I spent some time cleaning out my car a little bit and getting organized because I have a very early morning. And then I took a really nice long bath and watched the sunset out the window, which was incredible. So I spent actually most of the day outside even though I didn't hike today. So that was really nice. It just felt very restorative. My knee is very happy with all the decisions I made today and feels good for the moment. So I'll just keep an eye on that. But I really feel like I spent a good amount of time in this space and really got to um, kind of explore it and, and enjoy it. And that was really, really nice. Um, so do you want to hear something really confusing? It's the first weekend in March and tomorrow is daylight savings time starting. I still don't understand. Whatever. Here's what's confusing. So we're springing forward, right? So that means we lose an hour. And also I'm driving to somewhere in Arizona that doesn't, uh, they don't, change times. They don't, they don't observe daylight savings time. They're always on one time. It's really confusing because I'm trying to like calculate what time I have to leave. And I thought I had to get up and leave by 4.30. And I'm not sure because I can't figure it out because it's, the time is changing here, but then it's not changing there. So it's going to be the same time, but the help. <laughs> It's okay. So I'm just going to leave at the time that gives me enough time to get there and maybe have an extra hour at the airport. And that's just fine. That's sometimes I'd rather err on the side of being early than mess up and miss my flight. But uh, yeah, that's a little spoiler for what's to come. I am heading slightly back east, but not really. Um, just a little bit because there's some places to explore um, that I would like to explore 
in the great southwest and we will continue our journeys there in the meantime i'm going on spring break with my kids we are very excited about that and uh that i, I you know so there will be travels they just won't be for the youtube but i do share about uh, my family trips in my patreon community i don't vlog my family trips, but I do film um, trip recaps where I sit down and chat about our trips and I include like what I call b-roll footage so it doesn't feature my children. It just kind of features our experience through my lens of just, you know, like what we're seeing, what we're eating, and then I talk through what we did. And usually it's a Disney cruise, so spoilers. <laughs> but if you're interested in hearing more about that um, and you'd like to become a member, uh, I still just a one one flat rate per month it's a five dollars a month american dollars convert for your i mean patreon converts automatically for your wherever in the world you are coming and watching from but it's a beautiful community and um that is also where i share all of my home and lifestyle content um like the days of yore if you're an og you might remember um but it is a beautiful community and a really special place and i invite you to check it out if you feel so inclined Anyway, this was lovely. I feel like this is going to be a very long vlog because I don't usually spend three days in one place. Um, but that was really nice. And this is something I've been talking about and thinking about doing for the last, I don't know, year basically is kind of slowing down my travels and um, spending a little bit more time. Um, and I kind of, I'm, I'm digging it. So I had a wonderful time. I really enjoyed exploring this special place. I do hope to return someday. I don't think I've been anywhere in my travels that I haven't said that because it's true. There's just so much. You can only just ever get a taste of a place. You can live in a place for 25 years and still not, you know, do and see it all. But uh, I do feel very grateful to have spent some time here and, and enjoy the beautiful weather. I'm going to go out and look at the stars before I go to bed. And I'm just, thank you for being with me and coming on these adventures with me. It really is so special to me to share with you. Um, I hope you are well. Happy trails, happy travels, safe travels wherever you are. And um, until next time.